one thing I've been noticing in the workplace, I have a, a lot of individuals who are a little more negative in their current life. And it's not as a judgment thing, it's more of a, an awareness thing. And I've been practicing a lot of focus on what you want. Don't allow the negativity in your life to, to come in because it can lead you to a downward momentum. And I have a conflict within me where, there, where it's, do I speak up about positivity or is that just going to create more contention or usually, the negativity will? Usually it creates more contention. You just sort of have to teach through the clarity of your example because they will feel criticized. Even if you are accurate about what you're saying, they will still feel criticized. But here's the law-based reason that it doesn't work very well to speak up when you see someone who, without knowing it, they're shooting themselves in the foot and you're trying to help them out. This is why speaking up under those conditions doesn't work very well. When you're focused upon what you know they don't want and you therefore call their attention more to it, it's like trying to deal with it through action rather than through energy alignment. It's like jumping in with the action because the words in that case are like jumping in with the action. So what you would be better to do is to step back from it, take your attention away from it as much as you can. When you do think about them, if you do, when you are not with them, Try to find some positive aspect. Try to get your energy to flow in a positive way relative to them. A very simple tool is to take a notebook and just intend to fill it up one page at a time with positive aspects about your coworkers. So choose the one that's easiest, not the one that's most difficult first. Put their name at the top of the page and then just softly focus upon the positive aspects that you feel about them so that what happens is now you have cleaned up your vibration because they are like a contrasting microcosm of reality one person can be like a whole city so by focusing on this one person and picking out and activating within yourself the positive aspects that you feel now one time doing that won't accomplish much but if you really care about your alignment and this is someone that you can't take your attention away from because you work with them on a regular basis. You have to make a decision and line up with the decision. And the decision that you've made is you're going to see this person through the eyes of source. You're going to tune in to the way your inner being sees this person, which means you're going to have to practice that a little bit because that's not coming natural to you. Not yet, because there's so much that is bothering you. Seeing with your eyes and reacting to it is more natural than looking deeper and really knowing what the true essence of them is. In other words, it takes some practice. They almost need to be asleep for you to really be able to do that at times. So now you become someone who is reacting to your own decisions about them, not to what they're displaying. Now you're someone who's responding to how your inner being feels. So now you have accomplished through some focus, an expectation about them that they won't be able to ride over the top of because you have a different point of attraction relative to them. So now, if they are going to interact with you, they will begin showing you more of what you wanting to see. A really good affirmation is today. No matter where I'm going, no matter what I'm doing, no matter who I'm doing it with, it is my dominant intent to look for what I'm wanting to see. And once you get that active within you, the best of them will come forward to you. Other people will be surprised. Others will try to convince you that your experience with them is really screwy because they're not like that with other people. And you will be able to show yourself how powerful your actual point of attraction is. And here's maybe the most satisfying part of this for most people. If you really do clean up your vibration about them and find harmony with the way the source within you sees them, so that really is the dominant vibration within you, but it's not the dominant vibration that they're displaying. Law of attraction will put you over here and them over there. That's harmony. Harmony isn't you convincing them to go this way with you. Harmony isn't you deciding to go that way with them. Harmony is you harmonizing with the source within you. And sometimes law of attraction says, this is you and this is them. But it won't come to this place where you have to affect some departure. It will be the next logical step because they will not be able to buck your current. If you've done a little of step three, but not much of it. It's other, also true that you're really not yet a master of step practiced. four. 
Sometimes you won't be able to buck the current of what they're showing. They're just so obnoxious and so oblivious and so unkind and just spewing it and spewing it and spewing it and spewing it. And since you're just an observer rather than a free thinker, you're observing and observing. And every time you observe it, you harmonize with that vibration. You may just go with them when you don't mean to vibration. I notice that sometimes there's so much contrast that I will almost subconsciously pick it up. And because I'll be passive more of, I don't want to start creating any contention by speaking positivity against negativity and having that dissension. Here's the most important part of this conversation. Don't wait until it's happening and then try to do something that fixes it because action is really weak in comparison with energy flowing. So it's what you do in advance that makes the difference. You got to get out ahead of it. You can't wait till it's flowing and then in some last ditch effort, say something brilliant and clever that changes it all. It just doesn't happen. You have to begin flowing the energy differently. So you might say things to yourself such as, well, I don't really know where that person is coming from, or I don't really understand what the basis of their disconnection is. And I don't need to. There's a big difference between being empathetic and being Oh, that's such a powerful word because what that means is you're observing and getting hold of the vibration and now you're emanating the vibration and now you're in the vibration and now even though you don't want to be you are and so you're all separated from who you are where your inner being is not empathetic your inner being is not even sympathetic your inner being has what we want to define so that you'll really understand it a sense of true compassion and what that means is your inner being really knows who this person really is your inner being knows what's in his vortex and who he desires to be and how he desires to feel and your inner being knows that so completely that only sees that in this person no matter how this person is being in any moment and so what compassion means is being in the receptive mode no matter what so then you're free to look wherever you want to look because the looking doesn't run the risk of your vibration dipping that's what true compassion is and that's what true mastery of alignment is and what that requires is just wanting so much to feel good that you're willing to do whatever it takes to feel good which means not even observing the obvious things that make you feel bad and there are some people that say Oh, well, that's not very objective. Or you mean you want us to put our head in the sand and just not notice? And we say, if you understand law of attraction as it is, and if you understand that whatever is active in you, no matter how it got there, it doesn't matter why what's active in you is active within you. If you focus on someone that makes you feel uncomfortable, then the reason you feel uncomfortable is because you joined that person in their vibration and left your inner being and their vibration. Oh, isn't that an important thing to know? You wouldn't want to say it to this person, but you might want to say, you know, I'm so weak and incapable of seeing what I really want to see in you. And you're so good at displaying what I don't want to see in you that I keep noticing what I don't want to see. And in doing so, I've separated myself from all of my power. So if you don't mind for a little while, I'm just going to ignore you altogether because I can't seem to be in your presence and not go where you are. Even though where you are, I know for sure is not where you want to be. Because I know you want success and I know you want to feel good and I know you want clarity and I know you want all of this. But you're a strong man. You've been focusing there in such a strong way. You've got a lot of momentum going on stuff you don't want. And I keep going with you and I don't want to. So I'm going to ignore you. I'm going to think about you all the time when we're not together. I'm going to think about who you really are, how smart you really are, how capable you really are, how much is in your future. I'm going to fantasize about your success. I'm going to feel your happiness even when you're not living it. I'm going to practice the version of you that I know that you want to live and that I want you to live until it's my version. And then you won't be able to get me. So it's kind of like a preemptive strike. It's pre-paving. It's like this. So you decide that you're going to have breakfast and you're going to toast some bread. So you get out the bread, you take it out of the wrapper and you get out the toaster and you put it right there and you put the slices of bread in the toaster and you push the button down, but you don't plug the toaster in. And you say, hey, I did most everything right. I got the bread, I got the toaster, the bread is in the toaster, I've pushed the button. 
it's really nitpicking that I have to plug this thing in <laughs> and we say if you don't plug in to the energy you've got nothing if you don't plug in you don't have anything to give anyone else you don't have that joy coursing through you you don't have clarity you don't have stability you don't have guidance it's an easy call isn't it and so you kind of want to ask yourself what is it about you that keeps me from plugging my toaster in what's so compelling about you that I don't do what matters most in the whole world to me to do it's just habit it's habit of being physically focused it's habit of letting what you see and hear and smell and taste and touch be dominant it's habit of feeling negative emotion and not being nice enough to yourself to do something about it we're talking about everybody not just you it's being so conditional in life that you think when you change I'll feel better and until you change I won't feel better so you need to change so that I will feel better and you know that's the thing that makes most people resent you or resist you they don't think it's any of your business and they don't think they need to change because from where they stand they're doing just fine and sometimes the more you need them to change your children the more they will defy anything that you ask them to do because they still innately know that it's not their job to feather your nest with their good behavior I believe that 100% because even when I was a smaller child, my parents would force different kind of um, religion or other kind of, they would condition me with different traditions. Now it's a, it's a form of self-sabotage that sometimes it'll come into play or it'll be kind of like, I don't want that, like authority for instance, sometimes I'll almost resent it. Not anymore, not as much. I've been practicing for a lot of times. Well, but every once in a while it'll kind of come when back. When someone is authoritative when someone is exercising their authority over you no matter how extreme it is or how loud it is it always says to you I do this because I see you can't do it for yourself so it is always disempowering to you and when you feel disempowered then you feel disconnected and when you feel disconnected then you want to do anything you can to get your power back the emotional scale that we talk about where alignment feels like exhilaration and appreciation and love and passion and overwhelmment is not so aligned and frustration is not so aligned and blame and guilt and anger and revenge and powerlessness well when you feel powerless the most logical thing in the world is for you to find some revenge because you can't get from powerless all the way to alignment in one fell swoop there's too much of a vibrational gap and so the next logical step is to try to get your power back a little bit but you're way past that you know how to be in alignment you're tuned in tapped in turned on so much of the time but now you're fine-tuning because what you're understanding is hey I can be in alignment and be out in the world and I can see things that then take me out of alignment and we say that's a step five moment we like it when you have those step five moments because what that means is you're aware that something that you observe and not instantaneously but you must be observing it often enough that there's some vibration within you about that when you find yourself out of alignment and you recognize that you're out of alignment and you know what to do about it then you're home free then you don't have to cower and be afraid of others you don't have to protect yourself from negative others that might taint your vibration because you know what's going on you know how it works and there's nothing wrong with sifting and sorting even in a new relationship in a new day in a new hour in a new moment at work and knowing hey I don't want this I don't want this behavior I don't want this feeling that's a good thing but you got to follow up as you said to us you got to follow up with what you do want and you've got to put more of your attention upon what you do want if you want anything to shift in a lasting way for you sometimes you worry you don't want to be the goody two-shoes you don't want to be called oh yeah your glass is always half full you don't want to be criticized as the one who is intolerant of anything that anyone else is doing what you want to be is the example of a thriver and a thriver isn't just the one that makes the most sales or has the most money a thriver is the one that has the most success in terms of feeling the best the most a thriver is the one who's the most satisfied the most often who's the most happy the most often who's the most playful the most fun the most often that's what you're reaching for that's the example that you want to set so you want to just not make a big deal over things that are going wrong